All right. Episode 180 of the 580 show. We're back. Myself and Pro Strongman League 105 KG champion Nicholas Hine. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? Excited to be on the podcast. Yeah. I'm a little biased, but you're one of my favorite, if not my favorite guests we have on. This is probably like your third time on the pod in the last couple of years. Third, yeah, but you know, Pennsylvania boys gotta stick together. So absolutely absolutely. Well, so let's just let's get to it. We're coming off last weekend in the big win. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot to talk about with it, but but I guess first off, how does it feel? You know, how, how just kind of reflect on it a little bit and just you know, whatever you feel. Yeah, you know, um I've been shooting for that first place spot for a long time. And I, I put up a post recently. I've been second through sixth place through every major show that I've done since I started in 2021. And, uh, you know, every time just grip, grip plays a lot in, into it for me, but, um, you know, I just, I just wasn't ready. I, I, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't filed down to, you know, the best version of myself. And, this prep has gone so perfect going into the show. I mean, I was dealing with a little bit of, uh, well, a lot of bit of bicep tendonitis, uh, which was giving me a scare because, you know, everyone says you're not a strong man until you tear your bicep. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I that, that was a definitely a worry man. coming in. What's that? I said, I never want to be a strong man then. I don't want to tear my bicep. No, no, no. God. No, I try. And I, I put so much in, into rehab. Um, I put so much into keeping myself uh, healthy. And so that, you know, that was a scare, but, um, you know, I've been fighting and fighting and fighting for just, I've, I mean, I've never won even like a, a small, um, strongman corp one Oh five show. It's just been, you know, trying to keep up with the best since, since 2021. So, right. um, I, I don't, I don't think it hit me till I got home and got on the couch, you know, and then like, you just kind of start smiling ear to ear, but, uh, I'm just grateful, man. It was, it was a really, it was a really hard fight. Um, you know, we don't got to get religious or anything on here, but I am, I am religious and, and God carried me through that one. Um, because, and like you said, we can get into it, but, uh, I was dealing with some things and, you know, I thought it was going to be my bicep and ended up being some other things. And yeah. Yeah, I was able, I was able to tune that out and, um, you know, remember, remember what you go through to get to that place. Uh, our, our, our minds are more powerful than we think they are. And, um, you know, I I had to go to like I said I had I had to go to another place for that one and it was worth every second of it. That's amazing. It's funny too, like to rewind a little bit. I think your strongman, I guess, career is pretty unique because, like you said, you've always kind of been like in that two through six. But the thing about it is, you've always kind of like since I've known you or known of you as a competitor, you've always went against the best. Like you kind of just like from day one of strongman just kind of jumped in right like even if you look at um pa strongest like in like 2020 that was 2020 right like you were ahead no, that, of me. that was early 2021 yeah oh, okay yeah because he got pushed um but yeah you were a heavyweight and going against joey yeah. satsmary who at the time it was at his beast gym. yeah absolute beast and um yeah I, I think and then like 2021 so your first osg top five so it's not like it's not like Nick when he says that, like he's he's always went against the best. So it's pretty unique because you see a lot of people kind of come up like they start novice, then they go, you know, to this and then go to nationals. And you kind of just jumped right in, you know? Yeah. You know, so the, the last show I did for USS, uh, so they introduced this pro division. Do you remember? Do we, they still do the pro division. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. I believe so. Uh, but my wife and I were talking and we heard about it and there was a thousand pound yoke. So it was this really cool yoke that Jason Tietelbaum had made and it had these two uh, baskets on the side. So you, you pick and carry a 250 sandbag, load it in one side, pick oh, and carry a 250 yeah. sandbag, load it in the other side and you carry a thousand pounds down. And I saw that event and it scared the crap out of me. And I was like, I need to do that. And, yeah. you know, I have always chased those things that scared me, but that was like, that was like the kicker for uh you know me starting this journey was i'm like that seems impossible let's see if it is possible you know and i'll be honest i made it like 15 feet with <laughs> that yoke uh i didn't zero it but um you know it's just it's it's the challenge of it and uh i, I became addicted to it and I, I just became driven by that 
and then um you know like i've we, we've spoken before in the podcast about uh, how how I got started and it was just I was kind of pushed in and these are guys that I was watching you know on YouTube I watched ASM watching Jesse Nelson uh, strict press a 400 pound log and I'm like oh my god these guys are incredible so my first time walking into the show as, as, a, as a 105 I'm just in awe you know trying to, to just not feel out of place you know what I mean yeah so yeah I've, I've always chased those the scarier uh, challenges you know which I think right. we all should yeah, no, I and I think that's probably speaks volumes and and probably explains the why you're you know the strong man that you are now. Like you know, you've had to go against the absolute best since day one, so you're kind of prepared now. You know, you're kind of getting into that veteran range. You know, where you're you kind of feel see, like it. Yeah, I know it's crazy because like even starting like so, what was your official first year like competing in strongman? What was it like? No, what 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 year was it? Oh, oh, first year competing in strongman was 2017. Oh, okay. So yeah, do you're a veteran now. You're yeah, a veteran. yeah, yeah. I'm not, right, you, know, you, I'm did, not you started as a super heavy, right? No, uh, as a heavy, you know, I competed between 250 and two. I got up to like 272. Mm -hmm. Big boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, I I, it, I just didn't feel comfortable. I I uh, was force feeding so much. I was eating clean, I was just force feeding so many calories. I got up and I, I remember my daughters had a swim practice and I got out of breath going up the stairs. And how I'm like, someone's got to change, man. You're not the tallest, right? I mean, how tall are you? I used to be six foot one and I think I'm right <laughs> under six foot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come, cause I mean, just comparatively in a sport like strongman, I mean, you're, a, you're a huge human to, you know, pretty much anyone. Like when you're in Bloomsburg walking around, they're like, yeah, that's like the biggest guy that comes in here. But like when you're in the super heavies and you're going against like Bobby Thompson and stuff, you know, that's, it's just different, you know? So you probably found like your class kind of naturally. And yeah, yeah. And, and, and there is kind of like a build like that five, seven to six foot seems to be. And of course you have your outliers, you know, like a manual, he's a little bit shorter, you know, but he, he fits the class really well. Yeah. If you look at like the size of a normal one Oh five, you know, um, your normal competitive 105 they're like six foot but they have like a certain muscle stature and like do just refer back to emmanuel he's like the same size he's just a little bit shorter we all kind of have the same sort of build you know what i mean yeah so i think that's i just was like, meant for this class yeah that's kind of the thing i tell people like if you go to a show and you look out of place in your class you're probably like you you probably will eventually find a different class you know, like yeah. I remember like Dante went to his first nationals and he was a heavyweight, and yeah. then, like, but he was like on the smaller side of the heavyweights and he looked a lot like the middleweights that were there, like the two thirty ones. And then that was kind of like light bulb went off in his head, you know, so kind of naturally <laughs> gravitate. There's outliers for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, but you know, even, even guys that are my height, you know, I think Camby is a, a little bit taller than me. But you yeah. know that that larger size is possible, and uh, you know, but that's just you know for him as that example is he's just pushing his body to, to that next that next stage. Yeah. I don't I don't think I have the frame for that, but um, you know, kudos to him and he's doing really well doing it. You know, for sure. And if I remember correctly, you've kind of like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you've kind of changed like your nutrition and approach to 105 kind of as you've gotten more competitive in the years, like. When I see you now, like if I stop by the gym, you look a lot more diced and like farther out from the show where you're kind of sticking a little bit closer instead of a big cut. Is that kind of correct? Yeah, yeah no, hundred uh, percent. My wife um, at Mrs. Heinstrong on Instagram, she uh, she's my nutritionist. She actually just started uh, online online coaching. Yeah. I've been trying to convince her. She knows what she, she's been knowing what she's doing for years. She just uh, you know never wanted to take the leap she just liked to do it for me uh and she, she learned a lot as she went she is certified but she um she actually had certified to kind of help me and uh it, it, and I, I appreciate it but um you know i've kind of found that spot in about where i used to sit like 255 in training now i sit like 240 to 245 and i'll get up to like two like i i got up, like i was probably 10 days out and i was 249 before this cut started so but the knowledge gained over these cuts over these shows you know i've i i didn't sweat one time going into the show and that's yeah. something i'm really proud of just because i've worked really hard 
you know, and we've spoken about my first cut where I thought I'd go to the hospital, thought I was going to die, yeah, yeah. like hallucinating and yada, yada, yada. But, um, you know, now you, you just, you learn, you, 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 you put down the data, you, you record it, you, you, you see what you did wrong, you see what you did right, and then you change it and make it better and, and you know, learn from guys that come before you. And I, and I just continue to do that, um, continue to, to reach out to guys who seem to be doing better. And that's the reason I've gotten to a point where, you know, I don't have to sweat going into show. I, this, this was the first time sitting there waiting to weigh in. And I'm like, man, I feel fantastic. This is, okay. it almost threw me off. You're like, this is yeah. that feeling of like, this is going too good, you know? Yeah. But that's, but yeah, you're hundred percent right. Like you pretty much learn something new at every show you do about yourself, right? Like your 100%. body, I could have done this. I could, shouldn't have done this, should have, you know, whatever. So that's awesome. I just, I thought that was unique. And I remember you talking to me about that before, you know, where you used to have kind of bigger cuts and, you know, it's getting a little bit more manageable. So 100%. Yeah, that's awesome. You learn your long story. short, you kind of learn yourself as you continue to compete. But, yeah, but also as a coach, I, I have that extra data to, sure. you know, apply and, and test. And I think that's also been a really big, you know, factor in, in my learning process is I can throw out this information, see how it's accepted. Of course, we're all different and we all accept, you know, every cut's different, you know, yeah. but I'm able to throw this data out there and say, okay, do this. Let's try this a little bit different and then see how it comes back, test it myself, you know, and see what works. Because, okay. because like I just said, everyone's different. So finding those you know, different options, not freaking out if things don't go the right way. Maybe not jumping right to the sweat sticks. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I so, heard sweat sticks. Dante told me sweat sticks got banned. I, I, people can still use them. Yeah. But, well, I mean, I have a box still, but like I heard they weren't selling them on their site anymore. That's like pro hormones in 2014. Yeah. You know, they, they're just going to keep selling them after. And if they, I've never used them. So, I mean, I, I, uh, the sweat sticks. I have, yeah. I've, oh, you've never I've used heard, a sweat stick. No, I heard horror stories and I was like, I don't want yeah. to feel like that. Yeah, so, no, I mean, it's definitely, it, it's like really, really bad for just like a few hours, but it's insane how much they work. I just wonder like what it's doing to my body. Cause it makes me sweat and spit so bad that like, it's yeah outrageous. I, I, I just don't want any of that extra stress on me. Like if I start feeling sick, stress if i start feeling un uncertain stress and that stress adds up and com it compiles on and on and on and then you know yeah you might end up screwing yourself and when you're stressed out your body's going to hold on to water even more so sure um you know it, 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 it's worked for people and that i've seen them go in to win shows so i mean it obviously does work but i just you know there are better ways and and one of the ways just to mention uh while we're talking about it is is just more nutrient fo focused yeah you know yeah so. no i was i was talking to anthony deal recently a couple months ago and he he said he's like kind of changed his opinion on cutting and he's obviously a, a big nutritionist in strong man power thing and stuff and he's he said he's a big advocate now for getting closer to comp weight so i think mm -hmm. that's kind of for the same reasons that you just said and he's definitely a very well respected nutrition 100 he was one my, of the he was actually my coach going into my first osg oh really oh okay. mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah no that's interesting stuff um so let's talk about the show so a two-day yeah. show virginia beach just to lay the, just to, to set it up a little bit you know this day one uh was at the beach day two there was some weather had to kind of pivot move the show around man what just talk about your weekend. Like, let's just, let's start from day one. And day one. you had a lot, you, you had something happen on day one that, yeah, you know, so, so go ahead, just kind of talk about a little bit and I'll intervene when I feel necessary. Yeah. So, um, I had my, I had my worries and like I had spoken earlier about like the bicep tendonitis, um, and, and it was specifically uh, uh, an issue on pressing days and then on anything where I was statically holding in, with my arms bent. So any of the sandbag events. But, you know, when we're in competition, we're able to kind of block those things out. So I was like, oh, I'll be fine. So we go into the first event. Um, and I think that I, I had so many uh, friends and family there supporting me. Uh, my whole family came down. Um, 
And I, I think I, I put a little bit too much pressure on myself, but also um, I had never fully trained the press medley. So here I had a backwards. I thought the press medley and the circus dumbo medley were backwards. I thought the last bell of the circus medley was for reps. And I thought the top log, oh. it was, it was just one rep. And so I, I kind of trained for that. But luckily, I was simultaneously training for a max log that I'm planning to, to do by the end of this year. So I think that definitely helped me out. Um, and then, of course, my my experience in the sport helped me out as well. But um, I, I tell you what, those double dumbbells, those are different, man. They, I, I had I had trouble cleaning them in training. I only I only tried them maybe twice close to competition weight. And with my arms, I just I couldn't get my elbows underneath comfortably without that like raging pain going up into my shoulder. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to rest up and on the day, just sit, you know, just I'll be ready. So yeah. I was able to do OK with that. Um, and so to talk about the end of that, that medley, I uh, I squeezed in that last rep. And I and in my mind, I heard. So so Isaac Mays, just to lay the, the story here, Isaac Mays had just done six reps, which was the most right. um, done so far in the medley. Um, I knew what had to be done. And I knew that Isaac was probably the best presser there. Um, and I was like, all right, I'll just, try, I'll just try and catch him. Well, I heard down time. And, and then Bobby goes, uh, no rep, no rep. And I'm like, I swear I heard that differently. But I'm not going to argue with Bobby. And, and I'm not just saying it because he's Bobby Thompson. And he's a big, scary man. He's actually okay. one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Um, but I, I trusted his opinion and I, I'm, I'm kind of confused and I'm walking off and I'm walking down the ramp and my wife comes up to me and, and everyone just, I felt like Thor, like, you know, you're, he's got this yes man team. And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want this to be a rep if it wasn't, you know what I mean? And so they, they went and talked to Tyler, showed him video proof. And then Bobby comes up to me later and says, you literally locked out that rep at 59.89 seconds. And I was like, if you didn't tell me that, I would have questioned my myself because yeah. it's like you don't want that rep if you didn't earn it. Sure. And I was like, I needed to know that I earned that rep. So it was good to hear, and I was able to kind of move on from that point. Yeah, it um, was it was like very debated on. It was confusing because I watched the whole live stream, you know, throughout the weekend, and the commentators didn't know if you got the rep or not, and then. Yeah. So, you know, we saw that you did. So that was awesome. You had two buzzer beaters during the week. I did two buzzer beaters. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if you want to skip ahead, we can that that squad event. That was uh, that was the first time I really had to go to a different place, man. That was <laughs> the, that was so cool. I I just those reps was... were so hard. They looked easy. Looking back at the video, I'm like, man, that looks so much easier than it actually <laughs> felt. Yeah. But, you know, it, in the moment, you know, your body is capable of something different than what your mind is kind of comprehending. And every rep, I'm like, maybe one more, you know, from probably rep seven to rep 16. And then I heard uh, five seconds or something. I'm pretty sure I squeezed in those last two reps within yeah. five seconds. Literally. So, yeah, yeah. That, that was insane, man. That, that that took something totally different out of me. And it was it was a really, really challenging event. Cause, but cause I love what you squat, get 16, man. 16 reps on squat, wasn't it? Yes. And yes, and you, Sam, got three, you got three reps in literally seven seconds. Like that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it was nuts. Yeah. And S Sam Reisling did um, uh, 16 reps in 31 seconds or something like that. Yeah. Kids a monster. And, you know, um, uh, Isaac, I was talking to Isaac a few weeks prior and he said, you know, he's an 800 pound squatter. And I'm like, all right, you know, that's on a barbell. And then, and I'm like, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to try to hang with this guy. Cause I know it's an event I'm going to need points on. And uh, Isaac come, came up to me right after Sam and he's like, I told you he was a good squatter. And I was like, all right, I'm going to show you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I was, I, I, that pumped me up. I was, I was ready to go after that. But, um, you know, kind of to, to go backwards for a second, the uh, the sandbag throw, I actually was really uh, prepared for that. I, I trained it really hard. I made some adjustments. Uh, Darren Helmetis gave me some advice on some equipment. Um, I felt really, really good with my last training session. I was crushing all the bags on every throw. And then I came down late. I didn't get 
excuses, right? I didn't get the warm up at all. Yeah. So I did my best version of a warm up, you know, some banded sort of swings and stuff. Um, but you know, m maybe I got I got in my got in my head a little bit about the fact that I didn't warm up. I think we're more capable. Uh, you know, I, I I think truly, if I didn't get in my head, I might have done a little bit better. But um, not not the best event uh, with the sandbag throw. Um, but you know, we don't have to go through every event. No, no. But which? But what is to. crazy? What is crazy about the throw? Didn't you? What OSG was it with the sandbag toss? And didn't you? How well did you do it in OSG and sandbag toss? Didn't you have a really crazy good performance? Yeah. So my first year, I only practiced it twice, and uh, I got set. So it was one of the final events, just like last year, mm -hmm. the same exact final events. Uh, I got second to. Um, Oh my god! I just forgot his name. Uh, anyways, I got second in that event. Uh, yeah, which was really what, good points for me. Yeah, in so, twenty twenty one. Right. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because that, that, yeah, that's a little side note. But yeah, keep going. Yeah, and, and it was it was just an event that I really worked hard on. So it was a little bit of a disappointment. I think what threw me off was the fact that so for anybody who doesn't know, the event was not just a five bag medley. It was. Um, so each bag had its own point and then there was zones in the back, zone one, zone two, zone three, and zone four. So you could add up one, two, three, or four points for each bag that you threw. And so I was, I think I was a little bit overly focused. And when I, when I watched the video back, I was directly trying to throw the bags back because I never throw the bag under the bar, especially like, I think it was a 45 pound bag. I mean, there's no reason that I should be throwing a 45 pound bag underneath, underneath the bar. That's an, a pretty easy bag for me, but I just, I had that in my mind of going back, you know? Um, and I think also like the pace of it. So I trained it at a pace for sort of speed. And uh, when I did the event and the show and, you know, this just goes to show for, you know, all you, all the athletes like in prep for a show or have a show coming up anytime soon listen to yourself, listen to your plan, remember your plan, stick to your plan, because I can tell you two times during this show, one on day one and one on day two, where I didn't trust myself and I allowed outside, you know, uh, people to affect my decisions. Um, and if, and, and, th and thank God everything worked out, but if I yeah. would have stuck to my plan, things probably would have went better. So, you know, that's just something I Isn't try to tell all my athletes stick to your plan because that's what you train for and that's yep. what your body's ready for and that's Isn't what your it, mind's ready for it's just so crazy like i reflect back on shows and it no matter how experienced no matter how strong you are whatever it's crazy what the mind can do on comp day where you're just frazzled and you second guess and i see this yeah. guy do this and i see this guy and like that is such a good point that i like Really, I'm happy that you said that is like, even if like, I almost like write down, I know you work with Amelia, so like you do the same thing as me, but I like we, we tier goals and like, so mm -hmm. I have goals, but like, I really encourage anyone to do that is like, write down your plans, remind yourself of that. Don't, and, and really to novices and like novice people that I help, I tell them just cause you see so-and-so like, maybe it is a better way to do it but you're at the comp don't switch now. Like we've trained for 100%. so long. So it's just crazy to think like someone like yourself, it's probably cool for novices to hear that. Cause it even happens to people at your skill level. I'm not happy that it happened to you, but it's cool to reflect back now and see, you know what I mean? No. And you know, like, and I'm human, like, uh, no matter so i'm big on the same thing. I'm a pen to paper. I write out my plan. I mean, Josh, I had a printed out paper. Yeah, with my I mean, plan for for all 10 events um what to do what to do if this happens i i just i'm a big believer in that i i make the plan when i start and i adjust it as i go throughout my training cycle and then when i do my meditation and my visualization as i go into a show i read it right i recite it i i memorize it and i try to stick that into my brain and it, and it sticks into your body and your really body's does. ready it, it it really does and your body's ready for that plan and That's so thing. when you change that plan, you, you throw, you throw the universe off. Like right, it, right. It, you should just stick with, with what you know. Yeah. And you know, sometimes it might work out, but I'm just saying universally, like you should always 
stick to what you train for because that's what your brain's ready for. Yeah. And like I said, it happened two times in the show. Yeah. So. I think visualization is so underrated. Is like that's something I've picked up over the last couple of years. Is like I'll just sit there and you just gotta like envision yourself doing it over and over and over again and i swear there's something to it where when you get to the comp it's like i've already seen myself do this deadlift 500 times so yeah. now it's just time i'm just gonna go do the exact same thing i've seen myself do you know what i mean there's something yeah. very powerful to that yeah and i have this uh so i do like uh kind of like a static like seated relaxed version of that <laughs> and then i also do um the so it doesn't take a lot of of you know extra focus but it forces you to focus a little bit harder because if you think about the event you're you're trying to so this is my idea you're trying to remember a plan while you're exercising doing heavy stuff so i what i do is i uh, i'll have these specific days that i have to do my assault assault bike work and i'll do a, a minute hard and a minute slow and so i'll go through each event while i'm pushing going through that in my mind and then I have that minute slow to kind of go through, see if I made any mistakes, kind of run through it again in my mind, and then I go on to the next event. And so I do that pretty frequently throughout the week, especially as I go in. So then I get my cardio in, and I get my visualization work in, and it forces me to focus a little bit harder. So it's that's just cool. an idea if anybody wants to try that. Yeah, no, that's but, um You got to call that like the Hein visualization method or something like that. Sure, sure. That's pretty cool. But, Whatever works. It, it it's, it's just something that's kind of slightly distract you, but if you're you think certain. about the event, it's it's distracting, you know. So you're forcing yeah. yourself to be an under duress and remembering a plan. So yeah. Well, um, on day one, let's if you don't mind, what about the frame? Yeah. So you know what we all, anybody who knows me, they know that I have uh, I have grip issues. Um, I've been a. a, a laborious worker for my entire life oil field uh, construction welding um it's just what i've always done and i i've had nerve issues for years um and when i when i was warming up i i picked up the frame it was only like 560 or something and i sh i got sh shooting pain down my arms and my hand released and i thought to myself cuz i i figured i would carry it down and then maybe have to pick it up once or twice on the way back cuz that's how my training went and I'm like, well, you know what? I can still hold it. I, it doesn't matter how many times I drop it. I'll finish it, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, so the difference here, the frame that I train on, you remember my frame? The yeah, one yeah. from Joey's show? Yeah, yeah. So I have this I have this big boat frame. It's 365 pounds empty. And uh, it's very long and it's 32 inches wide handle to handle. Um, and sometimes when I, well, I, I do a staggered pick on yoke, on farmers, on frame. And so when I pick, I actually take a pretty large stride on my first step. And then I, I I do like a choppy step and then increase stride length. Anyways, so I was used to this method. And when I picked up the frame, I did my normal long stride, remembering that Eric Olson just told me short steps because it's a short frame. Mm. And I pulled, so I pulled the frame right into the back of my ankle and it forced, oh my God, I'm forgetting the name of the, of the bone, but the the bone right under the tibia and fibia, uh, I forced it forward and the, the, my toe got forced into the ground and the frame bounced and slammed into that and bounced up into the air. And then I was able to pull my, my foot out, but I kind of knew exactly what happened as soon as it happened. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was a, that was a bummer, but I was, my first thought was, okay, I have tomorrow and tomorrow is my best events. I knew that day two was my best events. So I, uh, we go up to our, my bag and I find out that our, our van got towed. <laughs> and so oh, I had to go deal with that. And I'm like, this whole time I'm trying to think, am I okay? You know, I, I was a little thrown off. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm starting to limp. I'm starting to not be able to bear weight on it. And long story short, so we get back to the hotel and then I, I, I started panicking a little bit. And um, that was when I thought I can't do tomorrow. There's no way I, I, I couldn't, I could barely put weight on it. Um, I had barely any uh, plantar flexion or dorsiflexion at all. It, it, it hurt to move it either way. So uh, I called my, I called my guy. I have a physio guy at home. He's, he's incredible. 
um, Dr. Dave Kerf, shout out Dr. Dave Kerf. And uh, he told me what to do. And it was just simple. It was what most people would do. Um, elevate ice and compression. And then he had me go through some tests to see if I had torn anything. We went through these tests, nothing was torn. Uh, he was he was happy about that. He said, I should be fine if I do this. So I did about six rounds of that. Um, woke up the next morning. You know, it was, an, I'll be honest, it was an emotional night. I was, I was like, maybe I'll just do the first two events. Um, they're static events, circus dumbbell ladder, deadlift ladder, um, you know, whatever. And then I'm like, I can't do that. So I wake up and uh, I'm like, I could ice it and, and stiffen it up or I could heat it up. So I, I got in a hot shower and then I spent the next, so everyone was sleeping. It was really early. I spent like the next hour and a half just forcing myself to walk up and down the hallway. And every time I felt the pain, I just said, you don't feel that. And I'd step again. And I, you don't feel that. And like I said, I am religious, but you know, I, I asked God to just carry me through the day. And, um, and, and, and he did. And it, it was, it was really hard to block out when it came in. But once I was there competing, I mean, I really didn't feel anything until right after the yoke event on the second day. That's when I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> this thing's starting to become really unstable. And also, I, uh, quick shout out to Aiden. Um, he helped me wrap my ankle, and I really appreciate it. Uh, he put some KT tape on and and got me feeling that it was it was stable. So yeah, it was it was it was a tough one, man. And it's a, like you said earlier, it's crazy what the mind can do. And uh, I was able to kind of block that out. And and my heart goes out to Isaac while we're on the on the topic. Yeah, seriously, man, I I was so heartbroken to see that. Like, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, you know him obviously. I've never even met him, but like, amazing great guy. competitor. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he won the first ever Clash PSL one hundred and five yep. that there ever uh, was. Second, the second, second one. one. Yeah, yeah. And man, like no. It, 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 Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, you're good. It was just it, it. You see someone battle like that for what you know, seven or eight events, and you and him and we're you guys were pushing each other, and then you know it, it happened. Really were sports an inherent risk you take when you lift weights and do strongman, whatever. But but man, it it, it never fails. It breaks your heart regardless. So you know, uh, you know, our thoughts are out with them, and you know, hopefully speedy recovery. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he'll be back. <laughs> He's a really tough guy, and uh, you know those Canadians, man. They're just built differently. Crazy, but man. It's crazy. He, he's gonna come back. He's gonna come back. He's gonna come back stronger, I'm sure. Um, but you know, it's just he, he's just a great example of the guys in the 105 class uh, that are fantastic athletes, but just good humans. I mean, he, he's he's got a heart of gold, and 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 also just happens to be a freak athlete. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just love seeing that the guys at the top aren't just a bunch of you know a bunch of a-holes because yeah. that's what I thought when I started in the one Oh fives, I'm like, these guys are going to be dicks to me. You know, I had, I had no clue at that time. And then find out really that the top class, the top tier guys are, are just good, good humans. And, yeah. and they, they know what everybody goes through. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I was just going to say. I think, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. I think people think that the higher up you get, the bigger of a dick you're going to be or whatever. But I actually think it's opposite because of exactly what you just said. You've gone through the novice shows, whatever, and you've probably trained longer and as hard as you possibly can train. So you can, you've been through it. So you can, you know, have more sympathy, empathy, whatever mm -hmm. for everyone else. And you, you, just, you, you respect everyone else that's there. And I think that's like the cool thing about strongman is that everyone's so nice and you hear it all the time. Everyone's so nice. Obviously there's some, some people are dicks that just nature of anything, but and it's cool because like you said, with the one Oh fives, like I feel that with some of like the, like a lot of the lightweight guys, it's, you have that like group of like brothers almost. And it's like, or sisters, if you're in a female class and like you guys all can so relate to each other, whether it's the weight cuts, the super heavies don't do the weight cuts. They can relate to that. And it's just like an amazing sport where like you can go and do like you did last weekend, like 10 events against someone, but then just, you know, have a beer or have a talk or yeah. whatever with them afterwards and talk to them in the week after just on the phone. You know, that's the great thing about strongman. Yeah. They're the sport really is incredible, man. I mean, my best friends have come into my life because of the sport. Same. Yeah, it just, it, it, we, you know, it's like the common joke of, uh, if you're in strongman, you're a little, you're a little fucked up, excuse my language, <laughs> yes. you know, but it, 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 it brings in this like, 
type of person that you know we're, we're, we're i mean we're all we're all fighting something dealing with something you know but we're trying to get better and we're, we're trying to be the best version of ourselves and and that's what, what what's so common about us is we we know we're a little fucked up but but we want to be different we want to be better we want to be the best version of ourselves and that's i think that's why it's such a it's such a crazy amount of good humans and to talk about the women like watching like nadia and jess and all them i mean they 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 handle their competition with such grace and they're just so grateful to be there and so supportive with each other you know it, it was it's really beautiful to watch and see like these animals yeah and these incredible human incredible athletes doing these things that most normal humans couldn't even imagine and and they're just fantastic people you know i hadn't i didn't get a chance to speak with a lot of the girls but you know they just watching them it was like like it was incredible to see you yeah. know and i'm sure you guys saw on the live stream as well for sure it, what was crazy was i didn't know until the after the show but jess who won the girl who got nadia is her coach i did not know that yeah until afterwards i'm like wow that's like yeah incredible. like that is that just speaks volumes to it you know like I think that's really, really cool. Reminds me like me and McKeegan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a see, that's a good one. That's a that's a good comparison. That's really well. But uh Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool though. Um are you lagging? I was, yeah. Is my service bad? No, I'm good now though, if you are. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Um so let's go to the last event real quick if you don't mind sure i'd um, love to so what all so it, first off that event was very 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 confusing for the viewers i don't it i don't know if it was like articulated the the live stream commentaries did a great job but like i still didn't really understand fully what was going on and i think a lot of other people were confused as well but it was basically like a la it was like a last man standing sandbag kind of gauntlet. Yeah. Gauntlet. Yeah. And uh I mean you can you can talk about it. obviously you didn't perform how you wanted to on that event, I would assume. But mm -hmm. talk about that event and kind of what happened. Yeah, so the event was a three sandbag gauntlet, and it actually it was supposed to be a little bit heavier, but you know, with the 10 event shows, they end up kind of making some small adjustments. So the way it worked was it was designed to be three rounds. And originally when it was designed, it was supposed to be if there were heats and uh, then you only had 10 finalists. So you go round one, everybody goes one time. It's pick and carry and load over a 52 inch uh, bar, which we end up doing 300, 280 and 240. I'm pretty sure. Um, but like I said, it was supposed to be heavier anyways. Uh, and then the top five from that go into round two. So if you're last on the first round of 10, which I was, you get one point. So then the top five go to the second round. Um, those guys go, two guys go, two guys go, one guy goes. And then um, those top two from that round goes to the last round. Those two guys go, winner of that gets first, second, second place in that gets second. So it, I actually think it's a really cool idea. It was just kind of like a, you know, fight to the end. A little bit-esque of the, like, endless stone that they used to do. Yeah, yeah. Stone to the death. Um, but I, I thought it was really cool. And I, I thought it I thought it was designed well. And, and I would love to see it in shows just because it forces you to kind of do that 10th, 11th, 12th sort of event. You know, uh, shout out to Jake Kerr and Aiden. Ma they just destroyed that event. Yeah, um, I, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't get to watch it till I watched the live stream because I was <laughs> uh, on my knees in the back praying. But um, uh, you, you know, to talk about my performance, um, so this is the truth. I had planned because of my training. My second pick was always my best bag, so I was planning to go the middle bag because you could do it in any order: middle bag, heavy bag, light bag. Right before I go. I said, that doesn't look like a 320 bag. And then I asked him the weights and the top bag was 300. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. And I'm not going to blame the gloves. The gloves were actually fine. I, I had gloves on because I tore my hand open. Um, but, uh, I'll, and I'm going to be honest here and, I, and, I, and I'm pausing because I, I want to be completely honest. 
I, I definitely got ahead of myself. Um, but I didn't realize how much stability I didn't have on my left foot. Uh, because I picked it at the, at the normal speed and went to carry it at the normal speed I normally would in training. Um, but I started kind of panicking when I, as I started to go, cause I'm like, I couldn't get my hips underneath me. And uh, I dropped the bag, went to pick it, dropped it again, <laughs> ran, loaded it, ran back, loaded the second bag. It got stuck, ran back, pushed yep. it over, went back. I mean, it was a disaster. So I, I, I actually wasn't panicked at first. I actually didn't panic until I, until I dropped the first bag. I was just like, Whoa, I'm unstable here. You know? So, it, it, you know, it was a mix between my ankle just saying, okay, we're done. And, uh, and me panicking. I definitely, it was definitely both, but, um, I had laid enough points down and I think, I think I'm close on this. I got first, second, first, and I think I got third on the yoke in a wheelbarrow. Mm. Um, and that had me six points ahead. Yep. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you were okay. six points ahead going to the last event. Yeah, and you know, it just it goes to show, like, um, because I thought I was off the podium. I was like, I just, I just ruined everything. I let everybody down. I, I just that was the worst. And that was a good event for me. Yeah. And I was like that. I was like that. That was uh, that was just. I won the sandbag. Who's the sandbag carry? Yep. I won that event. I'm like, I should do good on this. Yeah. Right. And you know, and what happened happened, but um you know things change and 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 th things happen that you can't really uh, uh control um but also um it's what you do in total it's it's what you do throughout the entire show that really matters and it's just a lesson like for anybody who finds themselves in a show where you know you're in the first event or second event and maybe you don't do so well like don't forget you have a full show of events to do. So just catch your breath, you know, don't get ahead of yourself. Just, you know, re remember your training, remember what, how you've prepared and, and just, you know, focus on one thing at a time, but it really is a total event. It's it's, and for us, it was 10 events, but right. you know, most shows are six to eight events or something or so, or if I'm sorry, five to eight events, but um, yeah, you know, uh, thank God it, it worked out. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It is a good point too. It's like, even if you're just doing a local show, you have to remember that that one event, like say the first event's a press and you bat on it, that's only 20% of the show, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and if you, if you let that affect you negatively, chances are it's going to affect the rest of your show negatively when you can just, Hey, whatever happened, happened, flush it. I got 80% of the show left. Let's mm -hmm. just go do what I know I can do now. So it's a great mm. point. And for you in this sense, it's only 10% of the show. I mean, I remember I looked at the day two events and I, I literally, I took, I think I told Dante or someone, I was like, Nick's going to win this show. Like Nick is, I, I saw those day two events. I was like circus dumbbell, the deadlift, the dead. We didn't even talk about your deadlift, but you're the only guy to pull the last bar, which I was like, God, that, that was such an awesome run on the deadlift ladder. But that was real. That was really big for me. Dude, that was huge because no one was even honestly. There was a couple of moments throughout the weekend where you kind of were the athlete to really break the barrier. Like um, mm -hmm. a lot of guys on the double dumbbell were getting hung up on the press method. Yeah. Specifically the the deadlift ladder. I mean, no one was even really. A couple guys took a shot at it, but man, you. I mean, yeah, Sky was, Olsen got very close. And yeah, so did uh, Chris Schwan. Yeah, but I mean, man, your your run was as flawless as it could get so um but what i gotta what say it? man I, I i did a i did a lot of so i i coached myself into the show yeah i did a lot of work uh uh it sounds silly but i'm i'm breathing correctly and and doing proper diaphragm breathing um before training and during training um and also i made huge postural changes that helped change not just my deadlift. You know, I, a couple of months ago, I put up a, a deadlift video with a weird cue about uh, pulling your butt cheek towards the back of your knee as you pull. It was just, you know, some, we all have these like weird things. You could say something 10 different ways. It's the same, same thing, but you just got to hear it your way, you know? Yep. And so I, I, I found this sort of phrase for myself that worked and uh, I applied it to all my like posterior 
posterior focused of like training events like uh you know a good mornings and rdls and and all these different uh di different exercises and and it made huge differences because i was posturally in the right position and i was bracing properly and then i was able to you know make huge advancements in in my deadlift and i was i was i hit like four prs on my deadlift going in at, with no suit you yeah. know because i hit 800 in a suit but that was a huge a huge pull and like i'd like to hear like your opinion on um on a deadlift ladder like you know say the weight is 750 you know what does a person have to pull to to hit that last bar intimately you know what i mean it, it i yeah, that's a great question. And I think I learned that at OSG this year because going into it. I pulled 700 going to OSG. And uh wow. and I didn't I didn't pull a bar that was less than that. Um on the comp day. And now granted, you know, you have a, a weight cut and other factors as well, but I do think you have to significantly pull more than the final bar. You know, mm -hmm. and every, I think everyone's a little bit different. Some people can grind out reps like crazy. Some yeah, people, that's a great point. You know, at, deadlifts that one movement that I find everyone like you and I can both pull 700, but mm -hmm. I might be able to hit 645 for eight, and you can only hit 645 for three. It's one of those, uh, no, you're right. It's one of those very, very weird things with that I found with deadlifts that it's, I don't, I can't, I don't really know why. Maybe mental, maybe just the way people are built whatever you know but i think conditioning and then mental yeah would be a lot yeah. of it so so when you so let me ask you a question about your training for your deadlift because you obviously we won that deadlift and it looks so good and you hit so many prs what what were your secrets in training to train for a deadlift ladder so i actually um it seemed like every time i went i had programmed myself to do a ladder i had tore something on my hand or something that happened um I so th I had like every third week, and I think that this is an issue for not to get in a totally different conversation, but no, I yeah. think this is an issue for a lot of coach to athlete relationships. Is like, so I would put myself at this weight range. It was about twenty pound weight range that I knew should be there, but it was one to three reps. Mm. So one is one is I'm okay, but maybe not feeling the best, but it's expected. Yeah, And then three is a good day, but I'm also not failing any reps. So of all these third week uh, deadlift days that I had, I never failed a rep. I chose not to do reps, but I never failed a rep. And I heard years and years ago, Eddie Cohen say he always left a little bit in the tank in training. Yep. And, and also most of the time, even on competition day. And that stuck with me. And so yep. I, I, I tried to really listen to my body push myself as much as possible and take advantage of those days. And then, um, you know, sometimes I got three, sometimes I got one, like I had programmed seven fifteen for one to three, I hit it for three. And then my last deadlift session, a heavier deadlift session, I was smoked. I usually I do a one week peak. I did this like two and a half, three week peak. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was brutal, but I was supposed to pull seven forty five for one to three. And I have my back down work as of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah which I would throw in like ladder work and stuff at a, at a lighter percentage. Um, but I was like, all right, I'm, I expect myself to come in. And as that was the most weight I pulled in training to come in and do one to three, I pulled one, I had two more and I stopped and I literally was like, good enough. Like I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to save some energy. I have more training to do. Um, but I, I was, I was th the fact that I knew I was completely smoked, completely exhausted I didn't push that. And, and, and you're, you're, you know, for me personally, try not to fail reps in, in, in training. Yes. It, it, it puts your body at risk for injury. You know, um, it, it, it takes extra energy out of you that is going to be needed for other training days. And then you got to push another day back or so. And it's just, it's better to just save that little bit. So really try and, you know, learn your body to where, you know, it, there's no ego and it's just data driven. And you're like, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I want to do this range, this like 20, 30 pound range. And just, and just keep a little bit in the tank. If I'm one or two reps short, it's not going to destroy you. It's not going to ruin all your progress. Right. And that's something right. like, that's something I deal with as a coach. Like guys are like, I ruined everything. Yeah. I had a deadlift session and 
I didn't, I did two reps instead of four. I'm like, how do you feel? Well, I feel good, but you know, I knew I had two more and I stopped and I knew I shouldn't have. No, you stopped. And that's good. You stopped. I'm right. proud of you that you stopped because you didn't go and break form, hurt yourself, crush your central nervous system. And so that's something that I really focused on for myself and, and, and in preparation for the show for that deadlift. And I think that's uh, what really helped me be successful. That's... And then on those off weeks, I would do a lot of ladder work as well. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. I think that's a really great point. And I do think a couple things just to reiterate that you kind of spoke about. I think also the you you mentioned the physical negative negative things connotated things to missing reps in training, but also a mental part is like, fuck, I missed 675 in training. I'm not gonna hit it at comp day. Like and I, I do think it comes with maturity in the gym. You kind of learn your body. You understand, hey, I can back off today. I feel like crap. I know I can pull that if I need to, but I don't need to today. So I think mm -hmm. that comes with your maturity level and, and how you train that. I think that's really smart. That's I, I think that's an awesome thing. And remember, if you're in the gym, you are training if you want to be good at strongman. Specifically, you're training for the comp day. You're not training for that specific day in the gym. Like, yeah, you're training physically, oh, 100%. In the gym, but you're, you're, the long goal is to perform. It should be going like this in training, right? Obviously it goes like this, but you want to end, you all, you want to end yeah, yeah. at the highest yeah, yeah. point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's brilliant. I'm glad you shared that because that's a really cool way to train. And yeah, Eddie Cohn always stressed that greatest powerlifter of all time, in my opinion. Um, oh, for sure. But, but yeah, that's awesome. But what did it, what did it feel like when, uh you knew you won honestly i wanted to see the score sheet i just had to know well i was like are you sure are you sure i and actually before they even announced it i looked at dante yep i sorry dante i'm not trying to get you in trouble buddy i love you um i looked at dante and i was like losing my shit and i was like did i win and he goes by one and i was like are you sure? Like yeah. I, I had to know that there was no mistakes made, and I think even like the next two days, I'm like, because guys were asking, we have like a group chat. Guys were asking if they would post, uh, like the points for every event, like an yeah. podium, you know. And I'm like, part of me like needed to to see that, and then I finally just let myself, like, okay, Tyler has a, a and let me let me just stop for a second and do this because this is very important to me. Tyler had the best crew. Top level judges, Bobby Thompson, Greg Popejoy, Andrew Clayton, incredible all weekend. Um, not to mention the female judges. Um, Nancy. Nancy, yep. Um, I forget the other girl's name. Tell her. Uh, was Panda there? No. Uh, Anyways, I don't know. Mention that later. Okay. Um, the, but the, his team did incredible. I mean, that was like the fact that they were able to adapt to get all that equipment out there when it had rained and they had a last minute cho change. I mean, it was they just did such a great job and they put on such a great show. I, I, I said to my wife, I was like, I don't understand why more people don't want to do this. I mean, number one, how do you get a more well-rounded athlete than in a 10 event show? How do you really know who the best well-rounded athlete is unless you do? And, I, and, I, and I've always seen that with like JF Corone. He does like those 10, 12 event shows, yep. you know, but you know, kudos to Tyler and his team. They they really did a, a fantastic job. And I've seen every other athlete say the same thing. Well, yeah, man. And I you just know what? Like, I told Dante, too. I'm like, I am so jealous because if they did, like, a 10-event show for my class, I would do any – that would be my, the only show I'd do every year. Because, to me, it, it finds the best athlete. And, uh, you know, you go to OSG, and I'm not throwing shade or anything – but you're only you go to OSG, you pay a good amount of money, and you're only guaranteed four events. You know, so I I just yeah. I love I love the idea and the layout that Tyler has, and I yeah it expands and continues to gain popularity, and I hope it does. And ten event total, not a recount at five, after five, right. you know, six to ten, right. but a ten event total, like you know. I, the sport just has so many different dynamics to it and has so many different types of strength and speed and, and skill. And, you know, uh, there's just so many different things to test. And I just yeah. feel, you know, so, you know, it's a great layout. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. And I do. I'm not throwing. Like I said, I'm not throwing shade. I think you know. No, no neither am I. The best. The best athletes find a way. Like at OSG, the best athletes find their way through. Um, but yeah. I just, I would just love the opportunity for more events and you know stuff like that. So I, I was just so jealous. And I actually, I actually knew you won before you knew you won because <laughs> I text. I was texting Dante. And I actually oh, sent really? out my congratulations to you before you even know you won. Cause I was like, you have to make sure, you know, he won, but yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to be the first one to wish to congratulate Nick. And yeah, he was, he sent me the score sheet. I was like, all right. So I was, yeah, my phone was buried in one of my bags. I, oh, dude, I didn't want to was... see it. Cause I didn't want to see what I didn't want to see someone. Cause I, I, my team my, for my athletes, they were yap, yapping away. Yeah, about for it. sure. I'm like, I don't want to see them say, oh, man, he got blank. Right, know? right. Yeah. You want to live in the moment, you know, 100%. Yeah. But that was just, I mean, I was. It was a nail biter, though. One point. One point, man. I was like. Yeah, and props to all those guys. I mean, Sam Risling, um, McQuiston. I mean, again, my heart goes out to Isaac. Um, yeah. Um, Aiden um, Howell, uh, man, he's Richie. pretty special. Aiden Howell. Richie came back on fire. Yeah, Richie. I mean, Matt Powell. I mean, it's just all of them. They're. They all deserve to be there. It was, uh, hey, they, I, 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 when I walked up to the podium, I thanked every one of them. Um, you know, thank you for pushing me. Like yep. that was, uh, that was, that was really, that was really tough. And those dudes are, those dudes are strong. And how about that moment with Matt Powell and his daughter? Oh yeah, that's still. Did you see that the weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was incredible. I was like getting goosebumps because my kids were over here, and I just was like. Dude, that must mean the world to him. Yeah. To have now his that, daughter. Now that I've had a kid, it means even it, it's like, oh, it was just like a crazy moment. It, was, it really was. It was yeah, really it was, cool. I it was cool to see he won that one award. I forget what it was, the just like the sportsmanship yeah, it's, award or whatever it was. Yeah, it's like the uh oh, now I'm drawing a blink because I give out this award at my shows. The um, Shannon Wilts? Shannon Wilts Award. Okay. Yeah. Is that I didn't know if that's what they called it. Um yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that's what they called it either, but it was basically like the same sort of thing of sportsmen, uh, the best, you know, the best sportsman that helped everybody out. You know, it was, he deserved it. I mean, he's such a supportive guy and such a great attitude. You know, I've never heard him say anything negative, you know, of, of the times I've competed with him and, and been around him. He's a, he's a really, really stand up guy. But yeah. um, yeah, all those all those guys are monsters. I, and yeah. Sam Risling told me he was going to go go to open. And I said, you better not, dude. You better stay in the 105s because you did some damage. Yeah. So I, he said he's going to go to uh, OSG as a 105. So, well, man, it was, it was just fun to watch. Like, I, I, love, yeah. obviously, I think Dante did a good job with the live stream. I'm biased because that's my guy, but uh, it was just, it he was, he did a great job. Yeah. It, he's getting really, really uh, good at it now. And, you know, he's starting to, so, but it was just fun to watch all you guys. And, and it's cool because I don't know, as many 105s as I do, like, you know, my class and stuff. So, like, every time I kind of learn more of these guys and there's always freaks that come out and yeah. it's, just, it's just insane to watch you guys because you, you – got. I think in Strongman you guys are the most impressive build to me because you're bigger guys, but you're also super athletic and can move and do everything. It's just – it was an impressive weekend by all your guys. So, it was, it was fun yeah. to watch. So, yeah, well, it was, it was, it was really fun to do. And like I had mentioned to you when we, before we got on, um, it, it took the most out of me. It, it took, a uh, emotionally, you know, that, I don't know if it was 10 minutes or, or two hours when we we're waiting for scores, <laughs> but, uh, that weight, that weight took like a good five years off my lifespan, <laughs> uh, just waiting yeah. to hear what happened. And my, and I, I, I got to mention this, my, my daughter, my daughters came in, my oldest daughter, Savannah, I have a 10 and an eight year old. Um, my oldest daughter came in crying and I was like, I was like tucked away in this back room and it broke my heart. I was, uh, I, and I was when I was like, I failed them. I failed them. I, they finally were able to come to another show. They haven't been to a show of mine in two years. Mm -hmm. And she was so attached to the outcome of the show. And, and, and I think it was more so of me. Yeah. She thought she thought I was destroyed, you know? And and that like broke me into pieces. And then to when they announced that I won and seeing her face, man, it was that was worth everything. I mean, 
yeah seeing those seeing those girls smile and my wife and and my team I mean, that that's I, I have i am such i am so supported at uh, my my best friend and uh, training partner charlie doer uh 90 kg athlete dave johns who was in all these videos coming up yeah as the ice right cream now. man video yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, and and you know my wife who's just never ending there ne she's always there to support me for everything she's pretty much a, a, a coach for me you know so i'm just really grateful for the, the people that i have in my life you know yeah man it's it, it shows you can hear that everyone yelling through and supporting you and everything like that so yeah man it's awesome and uh, you know it kind of takes me my last little bit but i was just gonna kind of plug high and strong and like that's why i think i think you're so supported is because you're one of like the best people I've met in the sport. Like, you know, you own Hein strong, which is like this gym that kind of people come to and it's more like donation based, but like you have this whole spot and everyone I've talked to that knows you or has worked with you, like just talks so highly about how much you've like support them and help them and everything. So it's just like, you're just a good person in the sport. And I think that's why you're so, Thank you. uh, you know, and I mean, I can speak for it, you know, you've welcomed me in the gym and helped me a ton. And, and of course. You know, I talked to you. So, um, you know, and, and you run a, you're running a show on August 3rd, Beast of Bloomsburg. Beast of um, Bloomsburg. Yes. Yeah. So make sure people check that all. It's on iron podium. It's August 3rd. Um, it, because obviously Nick cares, he's going to put on a good, good show for the athletes and everything. So, you know, I, I'm just a huge advocate for supporting people that are, are good people and strong men and, and want to help others. So, and that's what Nick is. So, yeah. Well, I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we do have our show coming up, you know, it's, it sounds terrible, but I don't even know if it is August 3rd, but I, I hope you're right. Is I it think August I'm 3rd? right. I, I, okay. I, okay. I think so. It, it's just been so crazy, but um <laughs> The last time we held Beast of Bloomsburg, it was such a success. Uh, we had like 98 people sign up and we had about 88 people compete. And it was just such a fun show. And my my wife and myself and my team um, put so much into it. We test everything, which we will be coming out with an announcement soon. We're changing up the deadlift to a very similar deadlift, but just a little bit different. But, um, you know, we, we we put a lot into it. And, and, and I know like you, the shows you hold, you, you care the same way yep. you know you gotta test stuff you gotta you gotta put that effort in to make sure that it's gonna be safe and it's gonna be an efficient show and it's gonna be a a, a show that uh is appreciative of the athletes because that's what that's we're it. doing it for the athletes you know yep. and they and we, and as you and i know you we know what it takes to put effort in for a, a preparation for a show and, yep. and it and it's it sucks everything out of you. And so you got to respect and appreciate and award these athletes for their efforts and, and what, and they decided to come to your show. Yeah. And um, I'm really excited to see who shows up, but I appreciate you shouting that out. Yeah, man. It's, um, it's an honor. We like, are excited. I, yeah. Like we get, like we put a little like thank you card in our athletes things when they sign up, like in their little goodie bag in it. It's not like just to be cheesy and like put something in there because it really is like, I sent out an email to the athletes cause we have, I think we had 130 sign up this year and we have like 110 or something coming after dropouts, but it really is crazy. And I'm so appreciative of people that make the decision to trust, you know, me to run a show, you know? And yeah. And I, I think you touched on a little bit, but I think the biggest thing that I reason I care about it, obviously being, we've been athletes, we've been on the other side of it, but it's some people's first ever show. And you have that, you have yeah. that, responsibility to make a good impression because think about it i think about myself if the first ever comp i went to was really bad and the person didn't care and people were complete dicks i probably would have never done strongman i probably might i might not own a gym you know so it's like that's why i take it so personally is like to be able to pass that on that's a great like, point yeah it's just like you you take it for granted because we're so involved. You know, you and I are so involved in a strongman, but there's that random yeah. guy that's an accountant that's coming and knows nothing. He doesn't, know, he doesn't know what PSL is. He doesn't know what USS is. He doesn't no. know what strongman corpus. He's and he's like, probably he terrified. Yeah. And we all were at that point. And like promoters have that responsibility to influence someone that could be in the sport and do great things in the sport. It's cool. You know, think about like, and this is why you put on fantastic shows, yeah. Josh. 
Well, because of yeah. what you just said, because <laughs> you make you make them feel appreciated, and that's why I my, I have athletes on my uh, my clientele that are coming back for you know the second time to compete at your show and drive six hours to come compete at your show because you put on fantastic shows. I've only ever heard great things, and I really hope you know other promoters take that to heart and they take that uh, first impression sort of perspective to. Yeah you know, these guys and, and these girls showing up because, you know, you don't know who's coming. You don't know their background. So you got to treat them with respect and, and and treat them like they're appreciated because they are appreciated, yep. you know, and that's why we're doing this. So yeah. really, really, really well said. Yeah. hundred percent. And even on a lesser scale, like a less, a non-sentimental scale, it's like people are paying you money to come. Like you should test events and take it seriously. Even if you're not as sentimental Absolutely. as me, you know what I mean? But but yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. I just, you know, I want to make that last point that Nick, like, if you're watching on YouTube, it's it's just at Heinstrong. It's on, it's underneath Nick right now on the screen. But make sure you follow Nick on Instagram and and keep up with what he's doing. He offers coaching. Um, if you're ever in the Bloomsburg area, I'm sure he would open his doors to you. And it's it's the coolest little. I'll spot. leave it open. Yeah, and yeah. uh, and and he's just a great person that does a lot for a lot of different people. So. You know, that's the best type of person to follow and reach out to and, you know, whatever. So he's a champ for a reason and he's an even better person. So, uh, man, I, I, I just want to thank you for coming on. I know it's late. It's already after 10 p.m. So. Oh, my gosh. I lost track of time. <laughs> <laughs> man, thank you. You know, thank you so much, seriously. And, and congrats on the big win. Thank you so much. Thank you for those kind words as well. And, um, man, it, it feels really good to come back on it and chat with you. Um, and if anybody is looking for a coach that cares, check me out on Instagram at Heinstrong, like you said. Yep. Um, but Josh, it was, it's been really nice talking with you. Yes, sir. That's, uh, that's it. And we'll see everyone for episode 181. Thanks, Nick. Take care.